Garrett Blevins here, and you know, as a professional power lifter, it may be weird to talk about strong lifts five by five, but I actually really like this program. Um, all you elitists out there, and you know, Stankmaster69 on Reddit, I'm talking to you too, even though you haven't done anything. Stop hating on these programs and get to understand why they work and why they're powerful. So first off, let me explain what strong lifts five by five is. It's a workout A, workout B that you just do on and off. As you can see here, you're just gonna oscillate between them as you go through your weeks. Now on workout A, you're doing squat five by five, as the name implies, same with bench, same with barbell rows. On workout B, you are still doing squat, so you're progressing that lift every single time you're going into the gym, but you've also got overhead press and deadlift. Notice deadlift, special exception, one by five, because deadlifts suck and they're, no. It's because if you're doing five by five on squat, three times a week, you're probably not gonna have a bunch left for deadlift, but you're still working your legs and your back here, so it's gonna have carryover. Now, this is the workout structure, and you're supposed to add weight every single time you're exposed to a lift. Here's what I mean. Your starting number should be low. In fact, the program recommends using like 50% of your five rep max as your starting point, but you can also just start basically with the bar, except for on deadlifts, it's actually harder to start with bar because you're at the floor, so might as well start with 25s, which is what I would advise here. And every time you're exposed to one of these lifts, you're gonna do more than you did the last time. That's called a linear progression. That's different than linear periodization, Linear periodization has a lot more going on. It just means that you're scaling your whole structure in a linear way. Linear progression means you're actually adding weight to the bar every time you're exposed to the lift. So you can't do that forever. It's not meant to be forever. Stankmaster69, sit down, put your hand down. I'm not gonna answer your questions because this is a program that is meant to stall out and that's okay. It's for novices. It's for people who are first getting exposed to the lifts and you're gonna have constant progress from a place of sustainable growth and that's gonna keep you engaged in the program and actually learn to love lifting. You want the best way to not love to lift? It's to go in there and get crushed on your first workout or get injured or feel like you're never gonna make any progress or somebody talks about their 30,000 week macro cycle that's super confusing you gotta go through that doesn't even make sense and you're just lost and it's so confusing and I'm gonna go back to steady state cardio and dumbbell curls. So to stop people from doing that, let's start at sustainable numbers and make sure we have space to grow. Yeah, the early weeks are gonna be easy. That's okay, focus on form, focus, focus on your technique. You're gonna have terrible technique when you start. You're gonna have to work on that forever and actually it never stops. I still have terrible technique. I've been doing this for decades. Maybe that's just more about me, who knows? Anyways, as I mentioned before, you're gonna oscillate between the A and the B workouts week on week. Three times per week is really the frequency you want. For squat, you, if you started with 45, you'd be using 45, then 50, then 55, then 60, and so on and so forth every time you do it. But for bench press, which is only on the A workouts, it'd be 45, 50, 55, 60. So it's gonna progress more slowly. Same with barbell rows, same with overhead press. Deadlift, you are gonna increase it 10 pounds every time you're exposed to it. And again, you're not getting a ton of deadlift volume either. The idea is that the growth is gonna come from the squat volume that you're doing and just getting used to the lift and the neurological adaptations of working out with the complex barbell movements themselves. So what do you do when you stall? Well, the first thing that you do is you deload. And what the deload is with this program is if you're missing one rep, from all your sets, like you've got your squats, you know, on this day, and you end up doing like, you know, it's four, uh, four for the first set, four for the second set, three, three, two, whatever. Terrible day, awful. Maybe you had bad sleep, maybe you got sick, maybe you had the flu, maybe your dog died, your girlfriend broke up with you, who knows what it is, but something messed up and your workout went poorly. What you do is whatever weight you were at, you drop it by 10%. So you've hit that plateau, you drop back 10%, let's say you were at 200 pounds, you're gonna drop it back to 180, and then you're gonna start the progression over again for that lift. You don't deload all the lifts, only the failing lift. And so what you're gonna do is when you hit that wall that just you couldn't get the workout done, you back up and you take another run at it. And hopefully you're gonna break past that plateau, but you're gonna hit another one. When that happens, you back up and then you go again. And you do that until you come to a weight where no matter if you're deloading multiple times, you hit that plateau and you cannot move past it. When you hit that point with probably a couple of lifts, I mean, if everything's moving forward except for maybe one, maybe you just hold that one and you continue to eke out, milk out some of those gains for the other lifts. But if you are stalling on multiple lifts, you've done multiple deloads, you're burned out and you're wondering where to go next, here's what you should do. Don't totally change your program. Don't jump straight into Shaco, master of sport, massive volume, crazy program. Don't do that. 
make some incremental steps. And the great thing about strong list five by five is it has a progression built in for you. The first progression that you're gonna go to, when you stall out multiple times is to a three by five. You're just gonna globally lower the volume, keep the same A and B workouts, keep the same progression, all that, but lower the volume. It's almost like you're doing a deload all the time. That's gonna allow you to recover more between your workouts, and it's gonna let you demonstrate some of the strength that you have because you're not as tired. So you do the three by five, follow all the same rules. When you stall out on that and you're missing reps, back it off 10%, take another run at it, you hit the wall again. Then just accept that you're not gonna get five reps with that weight. Start doing triples and move the weight up as you're doing lower reps and also keeping the volume low. And then when you stall out on that after having deloaded, you go to the final phase of the strong lift five by five progression, which is a single set of three followed by two back offs with 5% less. So again, let's say your top set um, is 300 pounds. You work up to one set of three with 300. You drop that back 5%, math on camera, I think it's 285, pretty sure that's right. And you do two more sets of three with 285 after that 300. And you do that until you can't anymore. And at that point, you are going to need to move away from linear progression. Linear progression is only gonna go for so long, it's only gonna last and where you milk out those beginner gains, primarily through neurological adaptation to just becoming more efficient with the lifts. Sure, you're gonna add some muscle during this time. People are gonna, you know, gonna ask, well, how much can I get? Do I, can I run this till I get to 300? And then do I do this program for 400? I don't know, no one knows. The only way you're gonna know is to try it. But the only way you're gonna try this and enjoy it is if you do start with a low base and allow yourself to incrementally improve. Focus on your form, focus on your technique. You wanna throw some accessories on after this. Yes, you can do some bicep curls. Yes, you can do some tricep press downs. It's okay. Make it your own, but follow the general flow and don't be impatient. The number one thing, and why I love this program, is it teaches patience, which is critical for barbell sports, strength sports, and powerlifting. You have to accept and learn how to under, undergo delayed gratification, where you're putting an effort, and I mean, here at least you get a little carrot, you see a little bit of weight going on the bar, but when you get to a, a higher level, it may be months or even years between actual lifetime PRs, and if you haven't learned that skill in an incremental way, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow later on. So anyway, so that's why as an elite power lifter, I actually love Strong List 5x5. I think it's a great place for people to start. And I think it's something that can help you if you are kind of confused or you're a little trepidatious about starting powerlifting or strength training, start here. I know you can move that bar. You're gonna have a fun time. And even if you only do this for eight weeks or something, you're gonna be stronger at the end of that than you were before. And if you get bit by the iron bug, I hope you'll join us on the powerlifting side and get all the way in. Anyways, hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.